Hey guys, this is Tab from FreeFly Systems. I'm going to give you a quick uh, tutorial on how to set up the three-axis Sinistar gimbal. Um, we've decided to show you today uh, the two-axis gimbal and how it can become the three-axis gimbal. The reason why we're doing that is we've got a lot of existing two-axis gimbal customers that are going to upgrade to the three-axis, and I want to I want to show show them how to turn their two-axis into a three-axis, and also. When we send out a three-axis gimbal, we're actually sending it as a two-axis gimbal with the parts needed to turn it into a three-axis gimbal. Um, the reason we did it that way is to give the end user flexibility to either run their gimbal as a two-axis um, or a three-axis. Sometimes it's nice to set up <clears throat> both of them where you can have on one Cinestar a lightweight two-axis setup for if you're flying by yourself, and then you can have the full-blown three-axis setup um, if you're flying with a with a pilot and a camera operator. So I just, I felt like those would give uh, our customers the best flexibility. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is how a two axis gimbal comes, um, kind of all folded up. So let's fold it open and make it look like a gimbal. So that's starting to look more like a regular two axis gimbal. So this, this is how this guy comes. Um, to switch it to a three axis, we're gonna need to change this down tube, which it comes as a 125 millimeter down tube. We're going to need to change it to a 100 millimeter down tube, which comes with the three axis kit. So in order to do that, <clears throat> you'll need to loosen this uh, top top clamp piece. That'll slide right off. And then I've already got this pre-loosened. That's why mine's coming right apart. But this, we'll need to take this tube as well. And it will just, uh, I've got it all loosened up. So mine will just slide right out of there. And then we'll switch that to the 100 millimeter down tube, which I just referenced. These can be kind of tricky to get through the clamps. So you just got to kind of rotate it and pull the clamps apart while you do so. It's just hard to get. There we go. So we got into both those clamps, pull up tight. Just, I'm going to snug these up just for the sake of the camera. Um, obviously it's much easier to do when you're not on camera and you don't have to work in these work in these weird angles but um so snug that all up get that roll servo belt nice and tight so there's no slop there i'm just going to snug these up quickly for the sake of brevity so Okay, now we've got that. Now we've got the two-axis gimbal ready to be incorporated into the three-axis assembly. So I'm going to set this back here for a second, and then we'll prep the three-axis. Uh. All right, so we've got the two-axis uh, two-axis gimbal prepped for assembly into the three-axis gimbal. Let's continue getting the three-axis uh, upgrade ready. So we're going to add these two longer carbon tubes to the assembly. These will provide uh, the support structure for the landing gear, which will allow us to change our landing gear from the actual Sinistar frame down to the 360 degree gimbal. So, um, let's get these guys popped in here. These these clamps are a tight fit, so sometimes if they if you're having trouble getting them in, if you rotate a little bit as you go, it can it'll help uh, help them to pop in there. All right, so. Let me tighten these up real quick. All right, so that's all that's all snugged up. So now we're going to need to <clears throat> we're going to need to attach the two-axis gimbal to the three-axis assembly. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about briefly before we do that, um, the Sinistar gimbal is if you if you have the the this down tube centered in the roll crossbar, the gimbal because of the pulley and servo mechanism on this side tends to it, want, it wants to hang to the left. So the way we've been building the three-axis gimbals, we've actually been offsetting that weight a little bit <clears throat> by setting this up so that the servo is on the right. We're trying to get this entire assembly balanced by the time it's bolted to the bottom of the Cinestar so that when your camera operator is panning around in 360 degrees, it's not, the CG isn't changing, which will make things more difficult for the pilot. So this came off of the two-axis assembly. It, uh, it used to be used in this, it used to be used like this, it used to be used like this, it used to go on that down tube. We're going to flip it the other way now, and it's going to attach here to the three-axis assembly. And this tube can slide, and what that does for, or this, this clamping mechanism can slide, and as you see, we're going to attach this to the two-axis gimbal, like so. 
what this allows for is for your two axis gimbal to slide back and forth and and you might need to do that depending on uh, the camera system that you're using we tried to leave it as adjustable as possible if you're running a really long camera you might need to slide that gimbal assembly back to get it balanced um, so let me go ahead and snug these up and uh, we'll continue on so three landing gear legs um, one one point of note the landing we, we offer different options with this gimbal some come with landing gear some come without landing gear um, a, a lot of people that already have Cinestars, you can use your existing landing gear from the Cinestar. So just be aware when you're choosing which, uh, which three axis gimbal or upgrade option um, you want. There's different options. We just planned on people that were existing Cinestar customers using their existing landing gear. Just didn't want people to end up with a bunch of extra landing gear needlessly. So let's get the three landing gear legs on here. You can see we've got three landing gear. Um, it's hard to tell with the white background, but here's for reference. There's uh, that much clearance between the bottom of the gimbal and the uh, the, the table here. I don't know, it's a couple inches. Plenty of clearance. You can you can have it tilted or full roll deflection either way and still land comfortably. So we've got the we've got the gimbal. We've got the two axis gimbal mounted to it now. Um, now what we're going to need to do is handle the plate. Uh, the mounting plate, which allows you to mount this whole assembly to your Cinestar. So this is uh, this is the camera mounting plate that the Cinestar uses for the Cinestar 8. Uh, the 6 looks a little bit different. It's a triangle shaped. It's still the same mounting holes in the middle. Um, we tried to we tried to make this upgrade process as seamless as possible. There was one part that we actually needed to change to make the three-axis assembly bolt to the Cinestar. It's going to be a, a simple modification for existing Cinestar customers. What you're going to need to do is uh, these four slots, the four three millimeter slots in the camera plate. The inner part of those slots need to be extended inwards 0.5 millimeters. So it's just going to take about five minutes with a needle file. Uh, just do it over a trash can. Um, file these inwards 0.5 millimeters. I just did it a second ago to this one. All, all new kits from here on forward um, will have a correct plate that will enable this camera mount to bolt directly up to a Cinestar. So it's not going to be a problem for, for new kits. Just for those that want to upgrade to this, just be aware of this. Um, it just takes a couple minutes. I know it's kind of a pain, but when you're designing these things, it's really tough to see you know, six or eight months in the future and think of the whole spacing for this shaft and make it all work. So we, it actually turned out to be pretty painless compared to what it, what it could have been, I think. It's good that, uh, good that we were able to have an upgrade path from the, from the old gimbal. So what we're going to need to do on this is uh, these, uh, the way this all goes together. There's four aluminum spacers. Those sit on top of the pulley above the threaded inserts. Um, and then this sits down on top of both of those. And then we've got screws that go through the plate, through the aluminum spacers, and then through the plate and into the pan shaft. All right, so I just finished snugging those, uh, those eight bolts on top of the, uh, the camera mount plate together. One tip I wanted to give you, sometimes uh, the way I do it is I get the bolts going through the camera, the camera mounting plate, and then I'll put the aluminum spacers on the other side of the bolt, and then I'll push it onto the pulley, get them kind of those spacers captured roughly where they need to be, and then you can rotate this whole assembly and then tighten it up. It just makes it a little easier than trying to have gravity fighting you with the, the spacers falling off as you're trying to lay this, this camera mount plate down on top of it. So now we've got the, the camera mounting plate, which uh, if you're a Sinistar 8 customer, you'll recognize this plate. The 6 looks a little bit different, but same idea. So this plate just bolts directly to the Sinistar, and uh, you can see we've got, uh, we've got a gimbal with 360 degree unobstructed rotation. You can envision a Sinistar bolted on top of this, and this thing is spinning around freely. Um, a couple important points I want to talk about. Um, once you get done with this, it's important that you CG. In, in a previous video, I talked about getting the center of gravity for the, for the two-axis gimbal correct. You kind of have to do both steps now. You need to CG the camera on the two-axis assembly so that the servos aren't, aren't wor working too hard to stabilize that camera. But then we also need to think about this assembly as a whole and find the center of gravity for that. So 
what you can do is, uh, you know, you can you can get your your whole setup ready to go, get your downlink on there, get your camera on there, everything ready to go, and then you can pick it up by these two, and then pick it up by these two, and that'll give you a rough idea of where the CG is. You can see right now, um, it's quite a bit, it's quite a bit tail heavy because there's no camera on there, but the the left to right CG is right on. So th the weight of this servo here pretty much offsets the uh, the weight of the servo on the gimbal on the side and the pulleys. So. Yeah, that uh, shows a working, uh, a working 3-axis gimbal, and hopefully I've touched on all the important points. Um, as far as programming your radio for this servo, it's got, a, uh, <clears throat> it's got a resistor installed that just allows it right here. We've just got a little resistor that plugs into that servo. Um, so that allows it to spin 316 degrees and turns it into a, just a slew command, a slewing servo, basically. Um, what, what I set the way I set up my radio for that is that you can dial back the ATVs and then adjust your exponential to get a nice feel for the camera operator. I like it to be nice and soft around the center so when they when the camera operator gives an input command, it doesn't jump or jolt. It slowly eases into it. I want to touch on a couple couple new features for these gimbals. We've uh, we've made a lightweight lightweight pulley for the tilt and roll axis. We were using an off-the-shelf part that we were modifying before. We went and made our own pulley. It saved about 20 grams off of the weight of the, the other pulley. So we're just trying to, uh, as time goes forward, optimize the design, make it as lightweight as possible. I know that uh, you know every gram you save enables you to carry a nicer camera, better lens, for longer flight times, that kind of thing. So we're, we're uh, constantly trying to improve this gimbal and make it as, make it as good as it can be. The other, the other new thing since uh, the last time I made a video is we've developed free fly servos. Um, we made these servos to have extremely low backlash for camera use. They also come modified for 360 degree rotation uh, from the factory. These, uh, the main difference you'll notice with these servos compared to others is if you, if you feel, the, feel any of the axes that they're driving, Typically, if you have any slop whatsoever in a servo, by the time it goes through the 5 to 1 belt reduction, you can actually feel quite a bit of slop, like let's say in the camera plate or in the roll axis. Any type of slop like that allows your camera to wiggle around uncommanded and bounce around, and it's really terrible. So these servos, ultra low, ultra low slop, I've been really happy with them. They also slew really, really smooth. Um, some servos can be a little bit jittery when they first move or a little bit abrupt, that kind of thing. So we've tuned these servos to be as smooth as possible for slewing. Um, I really like them. I think they're, uh, they're a good addition to the gimbal. When, when we first installed them, my camera operator really noticed right off the bat how much smoother his control of tilt was in particular when he would go to do tilt, tilt down moves while we were flying. said, you know, they f really feel great. So uh, just one other thing that we've added to the kit that people ask about quite a bit is, you know, how do you attach your camera to the gimbal? I just want to show you how we do it. I, I, when I first started, I used to use just a camera screw poking up through the camera plate and then trying to attach it to the gimbal. The, the problem with that is, you know, you've got the Sinistar sitting on top of this. It's on the ground. You're trying to attach your camera. You're getting poked in the eye with rotor blades. It's really, it's a difficult thing to do. So we came up with another way of doing it, which I've been using for a while. We just take a, uh, we take a set screw, thread it into the body. This is a 5D I'm just using for example. We'll thread that set screw into the body. And what this allows you to do is you learn over time where your camera needs to be for CG or you can mark it. Um, this allows you to just drop that set screw right through the camera get it roughly where it needs to go. And then we'll take this, this uh, we use just a little th plastic thumb screw with a metal insert. And it's very easy to find that stud on the bottom compared to trying to poke the screw up and into the camera body. This also saves your camera from getting um, scratches on the bottom, which if you're picky about uh, that kind of thing is nice. So then just thread the thumb screw on. And I just snug it up by hand. And uh, I think it's a much easier way to attach your camera than trying to find the camera hole blindly while a, while a rotor blade or a, a prop pokes you in the eye and you're on the ground underneath the, underneath the multi-rotor. So I just want to pass that along. I thought it might save some people some aggravation. But you can see this is uh, the completed, completed three-axis gimbal. Um, the only thing I would do if I was going out to fly this is I would just spend some time here CGing everything. 
CG the camera on the two axis gimbal and then I would work on CGing. It's actually pretty good, pretty good right now. So we lucked out. This thing's ready to go for a 5D Mark II.